Whether you're a new buyer to the Sony ZV-E10 or a creator looking for the best vlogging and content creating lens, then no need to focus your attention anywhere else because today I've tested four of the best lenses for the Sony ZV-E10 and I'll be sharing my experience in this video. So make sure you guys get subscribed and check out the link in the description so that you guys can have a chance to win a Sony ZV-E10. I'm going to be ending the giveaway at the end of next week. Okay, so first up, I have my beautiful wife who was nice enough to stand in and do some autofocus testing for us. So that was something that I was really curious about when using lenses that aren't native to the body of a camera because I feel like I'm going to get the best autofocus results using something that's made by the manufacturer. So that's just my personal opinion and honestly, I'm not saying that's true or false. It's just how I feel whenever I buy my camera and I'm looking for a lens. So I put this theory to the test by doing an autofocus test with all of the different lenses. And here are the results. I honestly thought that each of these lenses performed great. I would be comfortable using any of these lenses as I'm out vlogging or content creating. So after I done this test, I pretty much had the ultimate test, right? I need to pick one of these lenses and take it with me on a shoot out of town. So I went out and did some more testing and I ended up choosing the Sony 15 millimeter lens to take with me on my shoot. Now for me personally, the reason why I chose this lens specifically is because one, I like the focal lens that I was getting with the crop factor. That is something that you definitely have to take into consideration when using the Sony ZV-E10 because it's not full frame. So that means that whenever you're using these lenses, you have to also include the crop factor so that you can figure out what millimeter you're actually gonna be shooting at. So if you're a new camera buyer, trying to figure out focal lengths can be very confusing, especially when you're talking about a crop sensor. So what I've actually done is tried to help you guys out by including what your actual focal length is going to be after you chosen a lens and added the crop factor. I put this all in one PDF, which you can download from my website. So make sure you check out the links in the description to get that free download. So going back, number one, like I said, the reason why I chose the Sony 15 millimeter 1.4 is because I felt like it was a good focal length for content creating. You don't want something that's too wide wide whenever you're doing these talking head shots or you're just going around vlogging in my opinion i want it to be very very close and personal that's kind of what a vlog is now the second reason why i chose this lens is because of how fast it is you get that 1.4 aperture and for me most of the time i don't really want people to be looking at the background like you can see in this coffee shop clip that i've done i want it to come into focus and i want it to be the only thing that's in focus so if i was shooting at like a f4 um, or even an f5 or anything like that even a 2.8 this shot would definitely not look the same as it did and i prefer to shoot at shallow apertures whenever i'm shooting videos for youtube or tiktok or etc now obviously there are times when you want everything in focus right you want people to see your face you also want people to see your background in that case you can just crank up the aperture you still have the flexibility of getting all those things in focus but if you really want to eliminate everything out of focus then you also get that option when shooting on a 1.4. Now here's the thing, you definitely can still get the same results with a 1.8 or definitely a 2.8. Like you definitely can get some shallow depth of field. However, for me, I really do like 1.4 and whenever I have an autofocusing camera that's this good that I know can still keep track on my eye at a 1.4, then I'm just gonna do that and throw an ND filter on it. So the only negative thing that I can think about about these lenses or even the specific lens that I chose is that they're not stabilized lenses which means that you don't get that extra stabilization. Now, obviously you do have things like stabilization within the camera that you can activate, but you're gonna be cropping in so much. And um, that's not really something I wanna do because then I would have to shoot at like an 11 to get the same effect that I'm trying to get, or I don't know what the focal length would be as an equivalent, but you understand if you're cropping in a lot, then you're losing a lot. And so I don't wanna do that. So I wish that some of these lenses would have some 
lens stabilization features, but you know, for the price, I can't argue. Okay, so wrapping this all up, honestly, even though I chose the Sony lens, I think that you would be more than fine with choosing any of the lenses on this list. As far as versatility goes, I would say the Tamron 11 to 20 is probably the best lens on this list because you do get that focal length that you can change between at a 2.8 consistent, which is obviously very nice. So if you wanna be vlogging and do like a punch in zoom or something like that, you get that option with that lens, which is something you can't do unless you do like clear image zoom on the other lenses, um, which I'm not even sure would give you the same effect of you manually zooming in really quick on that Tamron lens. All right, so if you guys are actually interested in winning a Sony ZB-E10, like I said, you only have a week to enter. So as soon as you watch this video, go over and check out the link in the description so that you can sign up, so that you can have a chance to possibly win this exact setup right here. That being said, if you guys are interested in some color grading with the Sony ZV-E10 footage, then go ahead and check out this video right over here.